Hi, I'm Meg Tucker from 100.7 Cruise FM. Welcome to season three finale of Sliced Red Deer. We are in the kitchen at RDC where two chefs are gonna battle it out head to head using three mystery ingredients. Now we're gonna find out what those mystery ingredients are a little bit later, but tonight only one can reign supreme and become the champion, the winner of Sliced. It's time to meet our chefs. This is very exciting. These two local chefs battled it out in their own episodes and now they're facing each other for the finale. First up, we had winner of episode one from Staten, Maine North, it's Chef Sean. <laughs> Staten, Maine North, Chef Sean. So you come in first, you don't know what to expect, you don't know what things are, this time it's a little bit more relaxed. Um, prepping things in a different way and trying to maybe incorporate the, the three secret ingredients more because that's something maybe lacked in the first round. They do so many positive things, uh, Lindsay, always for the community um, and a lot of fun events that you can participate in. If you're really unsure about what to do, you can check out on, uh, online. There's lots of information there and if you didn't know about it before, it, it, it's, it's blowing up across Red Deer and it's moving really, really quick. Very exciting. <laughs> and winning episode two from Leah's Bar and Grill, Chef Bryson. Knowing surroundings is definitely a huge asset. Just knowing where the equipment is, what, how, it, how it works with the hot spots on the grill air, all those kind of little things. Anything that's, that is doing so much good for the community, it's, it's important that everybody comes together and supports that and makes people aware that it's there. Chefs, it's time to learn your mystery ingredients that you will be cooking with tonight. There are three of them. The suspense is killing us. Let's find out what they are. Okay. Are you ready? Oh yeah. Okay. How many ingredients? You have three mystery ingredients. You have toasted sesame oil. Sesame oil. You okay. have chocolate hazelnut spread. Okay. So that's one. Yep. And that's two. But you have three mystery ingredients. Want to know what your third mystery ingredient yes. is? Yeah, we do. I think the judges might have an idea. Is that like, is that like pizza? pizza? What are you talking about, pineapple pizza? I'm confused. That is your third mystery ingredient. You are cooking with a ham pizza? and pineapple pizza. <laughs> Okay. You, can, you can deconstruct yeah. it, you can use it, you can scrape it, but you gotta use that pizza. That is your third yeah, mystery different ingredient. Pizza. Different that pizzas. Pizza. <laughs> you have 75 minutes to create a winning dish using your three mystery ingredients. Taste, creativity, and how well you use them all. Are you ready? Sure. I'm Are right. you ready, yes. Chef? Your Let's time starts now. <laughs> Both of them? The ham and the pineapple. <laughs> Let's see what exactly what the sauce tastes like, what, what we have to do with the cheese. to meet our judges. Welcome, Sean Draper, new to the sliced red deer scene. Happy to have you on board. Sean Draper, just for you to know, you have, you've been on the red deer bar scene, it sounds like you, but you've been on the red deer bar scene for over a decade. You own To The Lost, you own Forgotten Alley, and you're one of the owners of Red Boar Smokery named, we learned, one of top 10 barbecue restaurants in Canada by Food Network Canada. So welcome. Hi, thank you. Happy to have you here. Cool. Uh, Pete Sock, no stranger to this kitchen. You won sliced Red Deer season one. You did so well that we encouraged you to go on Chop Canada. You won that too. And you own So Pure Restaurant and Bar. So Pete Sock, welcome. And Garnet Shetler, this is your turf. You are the cook instructor here at the Apprentice Cook Apprentice Program at That's RDC. Right. Yep. You're also a Red Seal chef. Yes. And did we hear that you have 15 years experience as a chef and you work for three years at a resort? Which resort? Absolutely, I was executive chef at Harrison Hot Springs Resort and Spa. 
Okay, so this is a very, very, very good panel of judges. We're so happy that you guys are here tonight. Now let's talk those crazy mystery ingredients. Toasted sesame oil. What are your thoughts on that one, Garnet? Well, it's, it's actually got a very strong flavor and it's more used as a finishing oil, so it should be right. uh, used to flavor some other ingredient. Not necessarily to cook with. Not to cook with, really. Yeah. Okay, well, that'll be interesting. Pete Sock, uh, oh, well, we're gonna save it because this ingredient's pretty crazy. How about chocolate hazelnut spread, Sean? What do you what do you think about that? Very interesting uh, ingredient to be putting into. I mean, what they're doing here—it's kind of crazy. It's delicious, yeah, but tough, it is, right? It's gonna be great to see what they come up with. To put it in Very entree. creative, hopefully. So yeah. awesome, awesome. And last but not least, ham and pineapple pizza. Whammo! What do you think of that one? It's my favorite pizza. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, you know, pineapple—you can do a salsa with it. Ham, okay. you know, stuff it. Bread. You use it as a thickener or a crust. So really deconstructing it deconstructing. is what we want to see That's the only way it. to go. I don't want to see a slice of pizza on the plate today. Okay, well, all right. That's why you're the judges. Thanks, guys. The chefs are cooking their hearts out in the kitchen, but really the true heart of this competition is for the women's outreach. Let's take a look at a video that shows some of the support programs that they offer. The outreach program is designed to meet the unique needs of individuals and families in central Alberta who may be experiencing the effects of poverty on their lives, domestic violence, experiencing a crisis situation, or feel that they are just falling through the cracks in our community. The outreach is often meant to fill in the gap in mainstream services with a key component of providing support and services while meeting people where they're at. We use a client-centered approach which ensures that a person who is experiencing difficulties in meeting their needs in a variety of areas has a major say in identifying goals and service that they need. The goal is to empower people draw on their own strengths and capabilities and promote an improved quality of life by facilitating access to the necessary supports needed to help them achieve personal stability. This program aims to enhance the quality of life of individuals or families by assisting them to achieve their chosen lifestyle and life goals through individualized planning and support coordination. The wraparound programs and services provided through the outreach offer support for individuals and families ranging from the most basic of needs to the intensive therapeutic support. We are in the kitchen at RDC Slice Finale, joined by our friend Darcy Willette, Fund Development Officer at Women's Outreach. Darcy, this is a huge event, and it's a television show. Absolutely not possible without so many volunteers. Can you talk to that? Oh, we couldn't do this event without our volunteers. Right? You know, uh, Shaw's had some staff and volunteers here uh, since 8 o'clock this morning. We started setting up the tables. We had volunteers to help move tables around. Uh, without the volunteers, it's just crazy. There's no way this event would be possible without them. It is. It really does take a village. Now, if you wanted to volunteer for Slice Red Year, how does one go about doing that? Go on our website, go into the volunteer. There's a volunteer application. Fill it out, send it back to me, and we'll get you on the list. And uh, we email out you know, whenever we're looking for volunteers, and people just get to pick and choose what they want to do. Awesome. Well, now it's time for me to get back into the kitchen to see what they're doing with these crazy mystery ingredients. Thanks, Stars. Bye-bye. Chef Sean, Staten Main North, you yes. made it to the finale, very exciting. What are you making tonight? Uh, well, we're making, uh, we have like a beet and a tomato sauce that we uh, cooked down, we pureed, and then we added the hazelnut, or okay, the hazelnut to chocolate yeah, mixture there. to that. Um, and then we have, um, we had a chicken meatball that we we're gonna make, and yep. so with a uh, full Hawaiian pizza, we kind of took everything down, blitzed it all up, took the crust, um, robo-cooped the crust, put it back into the chicken yep. uh, meatballs, oh, okay. and so that's all incorporated in okay. there. Um, and then we were gonna make it, we're making a gnocchi, um, really? with that, with that's that very, uh, 
brave of you. Why not? Why not? It's and the then, finale. That's right, and that's where the sesame is going as well. Sesame oil in the gnocchi, then we're going to sa saute it in the sesame oil as well. Hopefully the flavors come through. And awesome, you're doing a great job. I'm going to let you get back to it. All right, thanks. Chef Bryson, Leah's Bar and Grill, you made it all the way to the finale. What are you doing tonight? What are you cooking? Uh, okay, so we deconstructed the pizza. Uh, oh, the pizza. Yeah, and so I took the ham and the sauce and the pineapple and diced it, and I put it in a, a sauce I'm making there. Okay. So, and then I have some chicken, so I put down the chicken. We're gonna, we put the um, sesame oil on the dry pizza crust now. We're gonna turn those into <gasps> breadsticks. That's such a good idea. And then we're gonna make a, a sesame bechamel sauce and then incorporate the chocolate back into that. Yep. Uh, we have some croquettes that have bacon in them as well. Delicious, and like a potato gonna, yeah. croquette, right? And then we're gonna glaze that with the chocolate uh, sauce. So, so yeah. you were literally using the chocolate hazelnut spread into like a bechamel sauce. Yeah, so it's gonna be like a, a chocolate cream sauce and it also has the sesame in it that I made to use the roux. Can I just so. say you're cool as a cucumber right now? This is fantastic. Yeah, I'm feeling a little better. Love about it, this than love last it. Week, so, Good yeah. luck to you. Good Sounds luck. Good. Chefs, you have 30 minutes left. We are joined by the judges right now. You've had a chance to check in, see what these chefs are doing with these crazy mystery ingredients. What are you observing so far, Sean? I uh, got a chance to wander around and it really looks like they're using the pizza, the, one of the mystery ingredients. They're using it really well and using all of it, not wow. just kind of pieces. So yeah, it's, it's uh, going to be really interesting. That's good. Maybe we did not stump them, Pete. Yeah, I got uh, on a uh, chef on side. They're uh, making a uh, gnocchi, something I made wow. in the first episode, which I was surprised. Yes, you've been in this situation before. What speak to it being the finale? Like, what's going through their minds right now? Just adrenaline, pure adrenaline, and uh, half of the time, the items aren't even thought of until like the last few minutes. Oh my gosh, it's that's making me sweat. <laughs> Garnet, what have you observed so far? Well, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to use that chocolate hazelnut spread. Um, I've heard talk of uh, of a bechamel sauce with some of that wow. incorporated into it. Um, but how is that going to work with the other flavors on the plate? That's my concern at the this moment. This is going to be a great, great, great battle. Let's get back to the action. Chefs, you have 10 minutes left. Judges, you've got a tough job tonight, for sure. Now, Sean Draper, you're here for the first year as a judge. How does it feel to be on the other side of the table? You were watching last year, now you're here, you're a restaurant owner. What's it like? It's great, it's really exciting. I mean, watching these guys and the passion that they have and just seeing them in there working, it's, it's, it's really cool to see. Hustle. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly what it is, so. Big time. No, now, it's great, I'm happy Pete, to be here. Awesome, we're so happy that you are here. Pete, now you won Slice Red Deer, you own a restaurant, so pure, but then you went on to win your episode of Chopped Canada. That's major. What's it like for, for these guys? Because they may want to go on and eventually do that one day. And what was that experience like? And do you have any advice for the chefs? Uh, just go for it. Yeah, live your dream and uh, just go. There's, there's no time to stop. And it's a What do you do about the heat? Because it's so hot in that kitchen. <laughs> If you, if you saw the video, I didn't do anything about the heat. I was sweating. <laughs> sweating? I know. Sweat happens. Drink water. Yeah. Lots of it. Or else you'll cramp up. Yes. Good advice. And Garnet, you judge food competitions. So what do you look for? And what are you looking for tonight with the chefs? Well, I know what kind of pressure these guys are under. I've been in competitions before myself. I know, you know, you don't expect to get much sleep the night before. Um, you're working on adrenaline. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of pressure because they're really trying to do the best and show the best work that they can possibly show, right? And um, as a judge, you know, I've taken that experience and, and, I, and I, you know, I'm looking for something really special tonight because it's a finale. Chefs, you have one minute to go. You better get all of those ingredients on your plates. Six, five, four, 
is up. The chefs are finished their dishes. When we come back, we're at the judges' table. Welcome back to Slice Red Deer season three finale. It has been an exciting night. The chefs have cooked their hearts out. We are battling it out to find out who becomes the champion of Sliced Red Deer. We have two chefs, Chef Sean from State and Maine North, going head to head with Chef Bryson from Leah's Bar and Grill. Now they've had to cook with three mystery ingredients tonight, toasted sesame oil, chocolate hazelnut spread, and a ham and pineapple pizza. Uh, they are, will be judged on three things, taste, creativity, as well as how well they use those mystery ingredients. The judges are about to taste the dishes. So first up, Chef Sean, please present your dish to the judges. Uh, judges, this evening we've prepared for you uh, a Hawaiian chicken meatball on a beet and hazelnut sauce with uh, sesame uh, gnocchi. Nice hit of sesame in the, uh, yeah. Yeah, and the yolk, yeah. yeah. A lot of flavors. Mm -hmm. Every direction. Judges, you've had a chance to taste a chef, Sean, from State and Maine North's dish. Sean, do you have any questions or comments? Yeah, I just want to say the, uh, the chocolate hazelnut spread mixed in with the beets and that earthiness was just, I thought that was pretty bang on. That was really oh, nice. Great. Thank you. Pete. Thanks. I could taste the sesame right on the uh, gnocchi. As, uh, as you guys are aware, I love gnocchi, and the sesame was on there. <laughs> Bang on. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Garnet, any questions, comments, observations for Chef Sean? Just a comment, I guess, and, and it's that's a damn good meatball. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It tastes like a Hawaiian pizza. What can Perfect. I say? And it's delicious. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Chef Sean. Mm -hmm. Chef Bryson, please present your dish to the judges. All right, we have a uh, Hawaiian Aurora uh, chicken breast, like with sauce. Uh, we have croquette uh, with a uh, sesame hazelnut uh, bechamel. And then we have some uh, sesame breadsticks as well. I smell it. It's nice and tender, and I, and I like the sauce on top. It's gonna be a tough one. Judges, you have had a chance to taste Chef Bryson's dish. Let's start with Garnet. What, any questions, comments, observations? Chef Bryson, I really enjoyed the dish. Uh, the chicken is delicious with the uh, Aurora Hawaiian pizza sauce. I, I really enjoyed the croquette as well. My comment would be on the uh, the breadsticks. I really didn't get the sesame oil flavor from the breadsticks, unfortunately. Okay. All right, Pete. Comments, thoughts, concerns? Uh, Chef Bryson, uh, great sauce. I thought the uh, hazelnut chocolate spread kind of hardened a little bit, but yeah. the uh, Aurora sauce, the Pete Hawaiian pizza Aurora sauce, it's exactly like a Hawaiian pizza. <laughs> awesome. It's what you're going for. And uh, Sean, any questions or comments for Chef Bryson? Um, I really enjoyed it as well. My only comment, I think that the breadsticks threw it off a little bit okay. as opposed to the rest. I thought it was all really well done and that was just kind of there. Okay. Chefs, thank you both so very much. You cooked your hearts out. The judges have eaten. Uh, it's time for you to go to the break room and for the judges to deliberate. We'll be back. When the final product, they look up and they're eating like a fully cooked Hawaiian pizza. And so that's not like one ingredient, right? You gotta do like the sauce, the dough, the <sighs> ham, the pineapple, the cheese, whatever, incorporating what you're doing. So that was a surprise and kind of like a what, 
It was a curveball for sure. And so what, was that the toughest ingredient for you then, the pizza? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it worked out, like the flavors came out of it, but I mean, the other stuff, I just threw it in and mixed it. <laughs> like this yeah. one, I had the robo coop it and then yeah, mix it into the meatball, so it was, yeah, and just yeah, different, really different to kind of come across something like that. Yeah, it definitely took me a couple minutes to think about it, and I, I think that the, the 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 spread was obviously the one that kind of throws the flavors off, because you get that, you know, you get that, that your acid and your sweet and your tomato and, and, the, and your salt from your ham and all that, and then, then all of a sudden you get this, like, chocolate, right? And then you got to incorporate that with the sesame, too, so, I mean, they're very conflicting flavors. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So judges, you've had a chance to try both dishes. They used those three mystery ingredients. Did they use them well, Pete? I think uh, both chefs um, did a good job of using them. And I think it was just a matter of like finishing up the plate and making it make sense. And I think uh, Chef John made a little bit more complete dish. Okay. It had some vegetables in there with the puree and Chef Bryson uh, was, I think it was mis missing a vegetable component. So let's talk mystery ingredient, toasted sesame oil. There was a concern, because you had mentioned Garnet at the beginning, that it's almost more of a finishing oil, more of a condiment versus something they would cook with. Did they succeed? I think they used it in the proper way. However, I, I was able to taste it quite a bit in the, um, the dish that Chef Sean made. I, I, I know it was supposed to be poured over the breadsticks or kind of base it over the breadsticks, and I didn't really get it uh, with Chef Bryson. Um, I, I also found the breadsticks maybe a little bit overcooked because they were just really hard and crunchy and, and not really... Which used to be pizza, right? Yeah, Hammond, yeah. Hammond, per, Hammond, perhaps there was a better way to use the pizza crust than just to rebake it again a second time. You're nodding. In agreement? Definitely in agreement. Yeah, no, I was just agreeing with Garnet where, I mean, I think it was definitely dried out and the flavor just wasn't there as much as I would have liked to have tasted. Yeah, perhaps a crouton would have been a better choice for that if you're going to harden that up and it'll finish off with the sesame oil. But uh, the hazelnut chocolate spread, um, I know it's both. It's in both of the dishes, but I think one of it's a little bit more predominant than the other. I think uh, Chef Bryce is a little more predominant, and you know that it is. And the Chef John, you know it's there. But I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm on the fence with that. I would agree with that. However, I'm not sure how well it incorporated into the dish. Honestly, to me, it tasted more like the topping of a donut than it did in terms of a sauce that's you know suitable to go with uh, with a croquette potato or a, or a chicken breast. So, judges, you've had a chance to deliberate. Have you reached a decision? I think we have. Yes. Yes. All right. When we come back, we find out who takes the title of sliced red deer. It is now the moment that we have waited for. Welcome back to the finale of Sliced Red Deer, joined by two amazing chefs who cooked their hearts out for the women's outreach. We have Chef Sean from State and Maine North, Chef Bryson from Leah's Bar and Grill. They had to cook with three mystery ingredients. We had toasted sesame oil, we had chocolate hazelnut spread, and a ham and pineapple pizza, because it's the finale. Uh, this is the moment right now. Are you ready to find out the winner of Sliced Red Deer. Can we get a drum roll? And the winner of Sliced Red Deer Season 3 is... State of May North! Chef Sean! Judges, it was a well-fought battle tonight. Both chefs battled it out. How did you reach your decision for your winner? Chefs, first of all, I want to commend you for doing a great job with the mystery ingredients tonight. Um, we reached our decision based on uh, the completeness of the dish. And Chef John just had a little bit uh, better completion with the vegetables in there. So unfortunately for that reason, Chef Bryson, you were sliced tonight, but I want to say, I think we can all say what an amazing job you did. And again, the true winner tonight is the Women's Outreach. So congratulations to Chef Sean. Great job to Chef Bryson. Thanks, judges. We are joined tonight, very special guest, Bill Marshall from Zwilling J.A. Henkels Canada, who is going to make the presentation of the prizes for our two chefs. Welcome, Bill. Welcome, yeah. It was a good battle. Yes, it was wonderful. Great food. All right, let's make these presentations. What do you have for us? For, uh, on behalf of Zwilling J.A. Henkels, I'd like to present Chef Bryson, this three-piece set. Congratulations. 
The is, is uh, you know, we, we've got it going pretty good now. Uh, we've been working really hard to get our training going and stuff, and uh, we have a lot of things in store in the future. We're going to be uh, trying to stay in the community and help out. Uh, you'll probably see us again through the Women's Outreach one way or another. Uh, and we look forward to a new restaurant that we're opening in a few weeks, uh, potentially calling it Leah's Crossing. It's downtown, a little bit more high-end, uh, some seafood. So that's going to be our, our next challenge, and I'm looking forward to it. Congrats. And, and for our winner tonight, Slice Red Deer Champion. Yes, Chef Sean, congratulations. Thank you. This is a nice knife block set and a cutting board for you. Perfect. Do I, have to hold I hope it you all? enjoy, <laughs> both of you. <laughs> it's a little heavy. Oh God, oh God. It's fun. Yeah, it, is, it feels really good actually. And obviously, didn't know what to expect coming into it, but just kind of at the end result, and this is kind of where we're at now. So yeah, I feel really happy with my sous chef. I'm at uh, the State of Maine North location, but it's within the same Franworks group, and we just recently opened up uh, Elephant and Castle uh, here in Red Deer. Um, and so it's just kind of going through the training and getting that up and running and it's been extremely busy and successful with the first little honeymoon phase but um, that's kind of where we're going trying to get that up and running and smooth that out um, and uh, looking for potential spots moving forward. Well, thank, you. thank you so much. And that, friends, wraps up another season of Sliced Red Deer. What an unbelievable season it's been. Big, big thanks. Darcy Willette, Fund Development Officer from Women's Outreach. All of this, of course, in support of the Women's Outreach. Thank you, know, thank you to everybody who's participated, everyone who's come, all of our volunteers. Uh, couldn't have been done without them. Uh, if anyone wants to continue to support us, go on our website, womensoutreach.ca. You can make a donation or pick an event that you'd like to support. That's awesome. And of course, if you want to check out more episodes of Sliced Red Deer, please visit Shaw TV Red Deer. I want to say thank you to you, Darcy. And thank you, Meg, for being our host. It's been awesome. I've been your host, Meg Tucker. Until next season, good night. Sliced has been brought to you by these sponsors.